Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda. Well, high school football in the Sac Joaquin section is coming to a conclusion this weekend, but we have already moved inside, and that's where Access Sacramento and its crew and cameras have huddled up to begin the 2018 high school basketball season. Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week tonight comes to you from Grant High School, where this evening, in an intriguing girls battle, the Pacers will entertain the visiting Sheldon Huskies. Along with Lauren Goodman, I'm Will James. We welcome you aboard. Happy to have you with us for our opener tonight. And Goody, we have uh, two coaches heading these two teams that are taking on a real challenge, but they believe they're up, up to it. Well, these are two coaches that respect each other really well. They have founded a good relationship and they're both on the same quest of developing programs that probably have been off in the midst for a while, but they're already ready for emergency. Michelle McCauley guiding the Pacers in her first year after six successful seasons, heading the Foothill High Varsity Wild in her third year, coming in with the visiting Huskies, Gina Johnson at the helm for Sheldon High School. Now, if we take a look at the last meeting between these two teams, it was about a year ago, and it was over at Sheldon. Well, the Huskies handled it, overcoming a five-point deficit at halftime, as well as Huffington and Marburg teamed up for 43 points. That's a big combination for the duo and sparked a second-half comeback for the Huskies. That they did. Now, the last outings were very, very favorable for both teams. They were momentum builders. If we look at the graphic here, Gina Johnson's team rolled to its fourth straight win, while Michelle McCauley's Pacers bounced back from a loss with a very impressive win. Responsive week this week. Sheldon handled business against Burbank, obviously dominated. I got to see that one, as well as Grant handling Oakmont with a six-point lead. Big-time win for the Pacers. It was a nice response to a tough loss against highly regarded and number one rated McClatchy in the preseason poll. So that was important for this young ball club. Lots of youth here on the host Grant High Pacers. Now let's take a look at the players who are liable to make a bigger impact than some of the others. Our impact players the Huskies headliners will have to play big on the road tonight, Goody. These three juniors have established a relationship with Coach Johnson, and they are willing to work all heavy hitters ready to carry the load. she got a key junior group coming back. The top two there, Mambawe and Hufana, were the team's leading scorers a year ago, so you can best believe that they will be after a whole lot more. Eddington, a welcome transfer to fill out that front line. Now for the hosts tonight, the Prancing Pacers, they've got some hot shots of their own. Well, there's a rollover, if you see that Richardson name, sister to the great Richardson here playing for the boys right now, dominating in her sophomore season. Smith, just a freshman, again, we talk about that young core, and then Powell as well, bringing the contribution. 
Macaulay has a good young foundation that's definitely going to help them be significant in this game. Now, just to give you a better idea of the firepower from that trio, Diamond Richardson, who tonight, by the way, is celebrating her sweet 16 birthday, exploded for 47 points last night against Oakmont to help spearhead that win. And Smith chipped in with 24. Seven three balls for Richardson, four for Smith. So they've got high octane gunning and that should be some of the highlight in tonight's action. We got the table set for you, don't wander off. We'll come right back and add a few more touches to our pregame and tease you with this. We'll have an extraordinary solo performance for tonight's national anthem. Stay with us. of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. Welcome to the big show tonight, Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. I'm Will James. We're here at Grant High for a girls varsity basketball game. The Pacers playing host to the invading Sheldon Huskies. Let's turn our attention to floor level and Lauren Goodman. Well, tonight, Will, for our visiting Huskies, they are led by third year head coach Gina Johnson. She's in her third year leading the Huskies. They have been able, now she was an all Metro player when she got an opportunity to play at Franklin High School. Overall 21 and 35 record. This is the Huskies best start and longest winning streak under Johnson thus far. The third year magic is in effect and the Huskies are rolling. For the home Pacers, they are led by Michelle McCauley in her first year at Grant, four and seven. But prior to being here at Grant, she had six years at Foothill, where she was 93 and 73. In the last two years, she's been 52 and 11, where she has dominated the tables. Now we have to go back, member of the Grants back to back 88 and 89 D2 CIF championships, as well as six and four playoff record. And she's returning back to her alma mater to get them restoration. Coach McCauley, as you see right there on the right, is definitely excited about being the opportunity to lead the Pacers right now. Serious history for these two teams. They're in their ninth meeting against one another, and tonight is not going to lead anything back. Yes, two young programs, but definitely in position to make something happen. Huskies have won the last four meetings, and in the last meeting in 2015, Grant got a win, 53-50, and their closest matchup came in 2017 down in Elk Grove, where Sheldon was 41-40 victory. Tonight is going to be all of the spectacular. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of offense and a lot of individual skill. Back to you, Will. Thank you very much, Lauren. I do believe what you say is absolutely on point. Lots of offense and skill sets, primarily from some of those solo performers that are standouts in their own right. And this will be uh, certainly a very, very competitive game. Both clubs coming off victories. And that makes for what we have an exciting contest for you tonight. And the crowd continuing to come in here to Pacer Gym prior to tonight's varsity contest. Sheldon, their last time out, victorious, stopping their opponent by a sizable margin, Luther Burbank, while Grant stood up and handled Oakmont with one of their highest scoring performances of the season with that 77 point effort. The 
Grant Pacers playing in the Metro League while Sheldon comes from the Delta League. That Delta is about as tough as they come. So head coach Gina Johnson is going to have her hands full week in and week out trying to run the gauntlet there down the Delta League. Delta holds no holds bars as far as competition and talent. So Gina Johnson is definitely preparing her season and her team to get ready for that heavy core regular season. And reflecting back a little bit more on Diamond Richardson, the scoring ace, one of the two big scoring aces for Grant High. That was her first appearance back last night when she threw in the 47 points after having to sit out five games because of the concussion protocol that is compulsory. So what a way to come back to splash 47 in your first game back and then come out tonight against Sheldon on your 16th birthday. And uh, I imagine she would have to be considered stoked and primed and psyched up for this one. Well, Will, it's always a great opportunity when you've gotten five games to sit down and watch everybody play. You learned more, and then you're hungry. So when you come out to those first few games, you're definitely dominant. So I think tonight her emotion is going to roll over from that last great game, and then it's her birthday. Yeah, it's got to be something special. So we'll see if the inspiration from those accolades uh, take hold you know, with a major impact tonight. I mentioned uh, in the earlier part of our pregame that we are going to be treated to a performance this evening that we do not normally see around the circuit. This will be a first for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, now in our 21st year. But sooner, later, or in between, it doesn't matter when there's something special on tap. Uh, we're certainly very happy to include that in our programming. It'll be Mr. Maist McCauley that will be performing our national anthem this evening. And it will be a viola solo of the Star Spangled Banner. Mr. McCauley, a Grant alumnus, class of 1988. And the brother of Grant High head coach, Michelle McCauley, class of 1989. Maist McCauley, very modest, unassuming, and gracious, happy to be here tonight, and we are just as happy to have him perform. Well, we'll turn our attention to public address announcer Alan Rowe, a longtime mainstay here for Grant Basketball.
Okay, Alan Rowe in charge on the PA. There's our starting lineups. Our game officials that are going to try to keep up with the pace of this game and keep things fair and square. Referee Dwayne Wofford. And he's working in tandem with our umpire, David Clement. Well, there's lots of numbers to crunch come basketball time. Our ace graphics operator and statistician, David Stewart, has been doing some crunching. And in a moment or so, we'll be able to have some comparative stats. And we see here team comparisons. The Huskies averaging a bit over 55. Grant a touch over 51. Rebounds in favor of the Grant Pacers by quite a margin. Assists, slight edge for Sheldon. Steals per game, those Huskies are pickpockets. And blocks about even. So this does shake out to a rather even game despite the four and seven Pacer record. They have notched some uh, impressive wins and their top players are now back in the fold. And for Sheldon, they've won four in a row, but on the road tonight where there's never an outright guarantee. Nothing is guaranteed when you're on the road. You've got to handle business immediately. If not, you always give the home team an opportunity to do what they do on a normal basis. Raven tapping against Eddington. The Sheldon Huskies control. And we are underway here. Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Your basketball opener for the 2018 season. A drive and a travel. Turnover on Sheldon as Hufana tried to split the D and got tied up. Huskies, Pacers already competitive, been able to lock down defense, and now you see immediately the Huskies turning around and putting that full court pressure on. So the Pacers will inbound, and the lead pass all alone up the floor. Richardson down. Easy money for Richardson. Two nothing, Grant on the board first. Pacers showing a 2-3 zone defense. Jump shot on the way over and off. No good on the long miss by Mambawe. It's always been, even from playing experience myself and coaching experience, it's always difficult playing in the Pacer box. Richardson drive and dish. Inside Chippy missed at point blank range. Back come the Huskies, transition, feed low. Blocked out of there on the Eddington layup try. Diamond Richardson, who threw in 47 set her last night. Set her defense up easily, got on the right side of the court and got her easy layup. Rebound by Powell. One and done so far. Sheldon misfiring, but here's a turnover on the long lead. Too high. Substitution for the Huskies. Into the ball game for Sheldon. Rody McKissick. 5'10 freshman and mishandled near the sideline but salvaged as the Huskies avoid a turnover there. Drive and kick, baseline drive, nice move, layup short, rebound by Powell. And she's fouled from behind in between two Sheldon defenders. Okay, I guess they're gonna call Jordan Manuel for the foul. First foul. Break the press up the floor. Richardson lose the dribble and recover. Shot on the run, missed. She rebounds her own miss and sticks it back in. Diamond Richardson, happy birthday, Diamond. Time out, Huskies. Well, I think Richardson's kind of picking up where she left off last night. She's a stud. She's standing up, automatically coming out, making the right plays. As you see her right here in this instant replay, she is dominating on all aspects. She missed her shot, goes right back up for the putback, no hesitation, two points. She's averaging 25 and a half points a game and seven rebounds to go with it. You saw that offensive board there, quick to react and got inside the defense. And you can tell she's getting coached by 
McCauley, she's very aware and know what's going on on the floor, and she's actually a vocal leader right now. So this game could be very enticing. Okay, shaping up so far. 4 nothing Pacers early on. We played two minutes. Drive the paint. Bank shot missed. Raven again, another rebound. That's her fort. Raven Powell, and we see a backcourt foul against Sheldon. A hack against Richardson, registered by Elisa Higgins, her first. And you see the Pacers are kicking up these quick fouls as they're going in transition. That's going to pay off for them, probably in this end of this quarter, into the half, as they build up fouls. A poor pass on the inbound. Turnover Grant, the Pacers' second. Back to Raven Powell, number 15. She's averaging 10 rebounds a game, and we've seen her pull two already. So the Huskies up the floor. They've gone two plus minutes without getting on the board. Pacers are packing it in, Will, trying to not get any drive opportunities as they get the layup right there. Durham scores to get the Huskies on the board. 4-2 Grant, transition, Richardson, and a travel and a turnover. The third turnover for the Pacers. A couple of bad passes in the travel. Good lively crowd on hand this evening at Pacer Gym. Nice to have you with us. Deep J on the way, back rim no. Richardson on the run, gets bumped, no call. They've had so many transition opportunities, we haven't seen them in a set offense yet. Turnover number four. Big part of this game is who's going to be able to take care of the basketball and be effective when they have the basketball. Well, I do believe when we see the graphic a bit later, as far as Goody's glance at the game, on the way again, air ball, and again, Powell there to clean it up. Richardson taking on two defenders, splits them, runner down. Diamond Richardson, all six pacer points. Three ball gunning, not their strong suit, out of bounds. Substitution back on for the Huskies is Manuel. And there she is again, Richardson, just finding the gaps in that transition and then getting a little teardrop floater over the defense. Timeout taken here at the 440 mark as we near midway first and always an important set of keys in any ball game. And here's uh, Goody's game at a glance. Transition defense, well, you see both teams want to play fast. They want to get going. Obviously, the zone is to keep them stagnant. So whoever can play transition defense as the ball is going, they're going to have an advantage. I talked about it already. Minimize our turnovers. You have to take care of the ball. The Huskies and the Pacers have to prioritize over taking the care of the ball. See whose effectiveness will come out of the press. Neither team has really seen any results as the Pacers have handled the press from the Huskies very well. But who will control that and be able to take care of the basketball is going to be key. And then the three-point shooting. Three-point shooting tonight, who's going to be able to knock down more threes will definitely have an edge in tonight's ballgame. As far as Grant's concerned on three-ball shooting, Richardson with the rock there is their top three-point gunner. Pass inside, knocked away. It'll, it's a turnover. Five turnovers in three and a half minutes. Not good for the Pacers. And then the other three-ball threat, Samia Smith of Grant. She hasn't even had a touch yet. Huskies trying to respond. A lean in is a travel and a turnover. And you see Coach Johnson is so theatrical right now, going up, hands clap, and the jump, um, because she wants some understanding on that play as she's talking to the ref going back. All Metro selection at Franklin High and then a distinguished career at UOP. There's Smith with the rock to Powell. Smitty drives and gets fouled. 
Everybody on the Pacers is putting the ball on the floor very hard and aggressive, trying to get to that middle of the Huskies zone. Foul, I believe, is on Durham. Third foul. Loose ball handling. Powell's after it and finally tracks it down. Tapped out of bounds. Grant will hold on to the rock. You can see the frenzy and the continuous pressure. Michelle McCauley walking that sideline in front of the Grant bench. And there you see Gina Johnson in red. These are two passionate coaches, Will. Willing to work and sacrifice, and they show it with their emotion. Inbound from Olberg. Deep range gunning. And there she goes, right off the rip from Steph Curry range. Diamond Richardson back the other way. Another miss from three-point range. None of them have been close. And we got a tie-up, held ball maybe, but looks like referee Wolford is going to give the rock to the Huskies. Well, if you notice, the Pacers are trying to keep Sheldon around the three-point line, keeping them out, making them extend it, so the arms are pressuring there, but then they're also clogging it up in the middle to minimize drive, so making things very difficult for the Huskies. Montana King into the ball game. Outside shot, misses badly on the run rebound, Richardson. Drawing a double team there. Turn over Grant. I must say, she does have four teammates out there. Seven turnovers for the Pacers. No travel and a turnover, and in utter disbelief, Montana King can't believe the call. And neither can her coach, as she's questioning everything <laughs> right now. Gina Johnson, volatile, but dedicated to the sport. A tap away against Richardson, but she gathers it up. Loose ball handling. Heavy, heavy perimeter pressure by the Huskies. Credit the Huskies to begging some attention to Richardson as she gets a pull right here. But a miss from three-point range. She gets it back and gets knocked down, but it's another turnover on Grant. Before that play, well, they're, they're paying special attention to now where she's at. They're trying to find her, they're trying to get her double change and extend her, make her work a little bit more. And this is where Smith should take over that, that gunning drive. And a whistle and a foul. Hufana will go to the line. Alexia having an excellent season, averaging eight points a game, but last year as a junior was knocking down about uh, 12 points a game. So steady at the line where she's a 60% free thrower. Back rim, no. Great drive by Hufana right there. She's just trying to find the gaps to get an opportunity to slow this bleeding down. Lucky to have that one drop. One out of two for the outstanding. Guard forward from Sheldon. They're back on the board, but still down half a dozen at 9-3. A tough first quarter thus far for Sheldon. On the road, Smith drives, has it tapped away, saves it. Powell gets it to Richardson. Dribble drive, a miss. Push it ahead, two on one, blocked. Out of bounds, nice D on the recovery there. Raven Powell. Raven Powell making her presence feel felt. Inside, a whistle and a foul. Correction. There's Coach McCauley for Grant, and here's a replay on the last drive, all ball. Richardson, a miss. Good rebounding position and over the back. It's going to be a foul on Montana King. And now will you see the Pacers gym affecting the Sheldon Huskies.
Raven Powell runs it down into the front court now. Drive, dish, jump shot, missed. Tough rebounding there. Smith in the crowd draws the foul. Wow. Coach McCauley is happy. Smith is now getting into the rotation. You want a player to get a rhythm or start maybe with an easy layup or an easy free throw. Now she's going to crack the rim open. Samia Smith with 24 points in that victory last night against Oakmont. No good on number one on the season. Smith, a 61% free thrower. A chance to help her squad build a bit better lead and drop the second. 10 to 3, Grant. Corner jumper, air ball. Richardson takes it and drives it through traffic. Steady up. Minute and a half left and a travel and a turnover on Powell. Both teams are going to have to be cautious of that. Coach Gina Johnson trying to get her offense into her team, but both teams are going to have to be aware of watching their feet on those drives. And not Extensive trap from Sheldon. Possession arrow to Grant. Hufana comes out as Gina Johnson continues to use the rotation. Trying to find the right combo. Richardson drives into trouble. Smith picks up the loose ball and her drive is blocked. It's something about playing the Pacers that make you play physical, that make you play strong, and that's a long history of hard work. This program is definitely based on hard work and commitment and they're making the Huskies work tonight. A loose ball scramble. Who wants it? Last touched by Grant. Turnover number nine. And Coach Johnson is just trying to get across her team. We have to get some execution and turn these possessions into points. Dribble drive runner. Uh-uh. Crash the board. Richardson takes it on the run and draws the sideline brush foul. Well, this time, Melissa Gilmore. I know that's not correct. I've got six fouls here. They should be in the bonus pretty quick. Here's Smith with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. The Pacers are having them spread out. Uh, maybe Coach Johnson will make an adjustment. Richardson banks up another three ball. Largest lead, 13-3. Crowd really coming alive. A runner wild off the glass. Taken on the run by Smith. And we have played one. And after eight minutes, host Grant on top by 10, 13-3 over Crosstown rival Sheldon. We'll be right back. Fancy Pants Peanut Butter, a big screen television. They haven't even a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody remembers. Feed the pig.
Bulldogs. We are ready to open second quarter action here at Grand High School. You can see by our graphic, the Pacers have gotten off to a wonderful start here despite eight turnovers. They lead it by 10. And we'll see if this quarter break and what Gina Johnson has to share with her team will steady the Huskies who have played poorly here in the first quarter. Well, you see right there, we saw a little highlights of it. Richardson has a dynamic impact and leadership and she's getting her team fired up. So Huskies with first possession, elbow jump shot comes off long. Smith has the rebound. Two and two, poor pass, but saved by Smith. There's the two leading scorers for Grant right there. Tapped away, and it's a near turnover. Still a loose ball and a tie-up, and it'll go to Grant. So the Pacers dodge their 10th turnover with loose ball handling. Huskies have responded to Coach Johnson in the huddle, and now she's coming back. They're playing more fired up. They're communicating better, so let's see their defense in the second quarter. Diamond Richardson sends it to the corner. A pass into trouble and a tie-up, and this one will go to the Huskies. Jordan Manuel, number 11 for Grant. Passed into trouble. The defensive stops have to turn into successful offensive possessions for the Huskies right now. 13-10 Grant down the middle, a hard drive, a wild runner banks off long and a tie up on the rebounding effort. And again, Raven Powell makes it count. Alternating possession goes to the Pacers. Powell, dynamite rebounder. And you see Coach McCauley right there, part of the two-time state champions here at the Pacers. She certainly was, 1988 and 1989, back to back. We have an injured Husky down. Richardson, a kick out, long range gunning, down! And timeout on the floor as Hampton drills a three, but injured on the play was Eddington, their excellent junior forward, and I don't want to speculate, but we'll see if she can bounce back. So let's take a look at Kyla Hampton on the kick out. Took her time and splashed it. And you see a lot of enthusiasm on the Pacer side because they had an advantage on that player, got injured. Um, Got an effective bucket, timely, um, but I know Coach Johnson is probably upset about that injury. 16 to three, Pacers, the timeout coming here early in the second at the 6.51 mark. And you see the Pacers huddled up there and there's part of that Sheldon bench area. And right now, let's take a look and see if we can see what happened to Eddington on that play across the floor. Not a good look from there. She got her legs tangled on that play and she's being assisted off the court. They might just want to take her into the locker room even though it's early here in the second and evaluate it a bit better. Looked like she was grabbing that ankle. Um, we hope everything's all right. Up the floor, left to right. Huskies on the attack, but they're down by 13. Really, they have been stymied here in this first half. Into the post, one dribble and up with a short J, a miss. Outlet quickly, Richardson, one-on-one, -on -one. take it strong, a miss. Nice fight for the board by Raven Powell. Alternating possession. We'll give the ball back to Sheldon, but I'm very impressed with her rebounding effort. Powell has a sense to find the ball and be where the ball is. As you see, she walked right into that. Off, almost offensive rebound, but she has a great sense of finding where the ball is and being in the right spot at the right time. Alexia Lufana back into the ball game for Sheldon. They're gonna need her firepower. Whistle and a foul. It's 
spotted by Dwayne Wofford. And it's Powell picking up her second. That will be a bit of concern for head coach Michelle McCauley of Grant. Nice tap away right there. Loose ball handling, but the Huskies hold on to it. Kick out, left open for the long J, another miss. Follow up, missed, but a whistle and a foul. I must say, the Huskies cannot buy a bucket from the outside at this point in time. They're not winning the battle, but Powell just picked up her third foul right there, so maybe they'll see some light right here as she may come off the floor. A miss on number one taken by Alyssa Higgins and misses both. Held ball, alternating possession goes to the Pacers. So Powell is gonna come out and coming on in relief would be Kalia Brookins, but a timeout taken, it's a full timeout and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Yeah. It's not my first time bartending, so. It's a soft party. Anyway. <laughs> it's fine. I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing. Yeah. Is that the music when Momo kicks it into high gear is going to get a little bit loud here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. So you may want to. What? Back to action, Grant with possession on top, 16-3. Here's a bad pass and an interception. Two and one, driving layup, oh yes. Hufana has. That's what you want to see as a coach. Needed adjustment in response to timeout. Air ball miss, put back, good. Sania Smith. One and done. Richardson is just getting too much space to do whatever she wants right now, bringing the ball up easy. Now they're jamming her up, but she's getting to control the defense. A drive right into the teeth of the defense. Three Huskies were right there, but she manages to draw a foul and comes up holding an elbow. Richardson is a scrappy player. She plays very long and agile, um, but she's all over the floor right now, and they're trying to get some calls over, over on her on the Husky side, but not successful thus far. Richardson walking dribble. Open shot, banked in. My, my. Teresa Olberg with the J. Home court advantage is kicking in, Will. A long miss, another miss. Follow up. No good. The Huskies can't buy a basket right now. And another sideline brush. Let's take a look at the Olberg three ball. <clears throat> Left open and bingo off the glass. Catch, shoot and be ready, and Coach McCauley was talking about that at halftime in her huddle. She said, be ready, be ready to shoot, be um, paying attention and be willing to shoot the shot when it comes to you, and that's what she did on that last play. Rody McKissick with the foul. She sits down, and Richardson to the stripe.
Number one, no good on the front end of bonus. Good hands on the tap away there, but the Huskies will have the rock as we near midway second here. Nice to have you with us here on Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Hufana runs into tough defense there, but it's going to be a foul called on Jamia Gray. Correction, a foul on Mercy Medicine Grow. Hufana drops the free throw. And she'll be up there for seconds and misses that one. Rebound, put back is good. Nicely done. Ajene Durham with the hoop, her second bucket, 21 to eight. Corner jump shot, air ball by Olberg. And a rebounding foul against Grant. Let's take another look at this nice timing on the rebound and soft touch by Durham. Positioning is everything and then pushing and boxing out. Nobody boxed her out, so she got that offensive rebound. Hufana to Durham. Uh-uh, air ball long. They still don't have anything from out there, yet they keep gunning away. You know, if I was to guess, I'd say 0 for 15. Four minute mark, midway second. Diamond Richardson directing traffic at the point. Now, Simia Smith. She really has not had an opportunity to open up offensively. Richardson, short, no good. One and done. Hufana. Speeds into the front court, dishes off. Another pass, a shot and a miss. Richardson off to the races again, one on two. Take it strong, a layup. Missed. Tapped away, but grab. Pacers in control. Follow up shot blocked. Another follow missed. After it in the corner. Pacers control. Down low. Medicine Crow with the follow, draws a foul on Ufana. Will and Coach Johnson is upset right now because the Pacers are just out hustling her team. There's no way we can have that many tips, that many deflections, and we don't take the basketball away. And then if you're on Coach McCauley's side, you are excited about how your team is playing in their effort. Nobody is matching their effort right now. That's why they have the big lead. A miss on number one by Mercy Medicine Crow. Just a 21% free thrower from there. Let's see if she can clean up the backside and does. Nice touch. It's different when you play at home. 22 to eight. Outside shot missed. Even with Powell on the bench, the Pacers are continuing to out-rebound the Huskies. So, Sheldon hits the cutter on the inbound, a miss. They gather, reload, and miss again. Tough inside. Nice rebounding again there. This time, credit Hampton. Kyla Hampton, who had that three ball a short time ago, down at the other end, tough on the rebound there, but they're gonna award the ball on the alternating possession to the Huskies. Second quarter slipping away, just 2.50 to go before the half. Corner shot blocked. Out of bounds to the Huskies. Well, one look at Gina Johnson up along that Sheldon bench, you can tell that she is not pleased with her squad's performance so far. The runner missed, but it's a foul. Two Pacers were there, Olberg and Medicine Crow. It's Olberg picking up the foul. So, to the line, 
And we're very happy to see Eddington back into the ball game. She had uh, some kind of a lower leg injury earlier in the ball game. A miss on number one. 44% free thrower. Splits them 50-50. It's her first point of the ball game. 22 to nine. Richardson on the floor. Handling the rock. Hand checked by the defender. Bank shot, no. Rebound, Sheldon. Up the floor, long lead. Eddington, a kick out, a forced jump shot. Uh-uh. Olberg boards it, trapped. Outlet though, and we got a whistle and a time out. A full time out called by Coach McCauley. Coach McCauley's trying to get her team to settle down. She sees that they're a little fatigued right now, and of course she wants to get Richardson that blow. She's in such command of their offense that these are timely timeouts to get her team a blow. Also, you see her in the huddle right now, just trying to get them to regroup. She got a really young group, and so some of these timeouts are not really execution of plays, but also just execution of composure and how to handle the situations because these kids are learning on the fly. That they are, as we mentioned at the outset. Coach uh, McCauley, as you see there, taking on a, a tough challenge, coming to a program that has not had recent success. In fact, it's been six years since they had a team that played over 500. That was under Coach David Kendrick. So the challenge is there, and Michelle McCauley is up for it, and she's got, as you say, Goody, a young crew, but boy, some nice pieces to build around. Yeah, and Coach McCauley's passion is here for what you see on both sides of the court. Lady Pacers, back-to-back -back state championships. She's here because this is home, and so her commitment to detail and execution is going to be higher than any probably other coach, so they're in good hands. Richardson, Smith, missed on the corner three ball. Here's a foot race. And chasing it down and scoring at the other end is Eddington. Nice hustle. Eddington picked it up a gear right there. 22 to 11. Grant in charge. They've led from the outset. Richardson, a long miss in the same spot where Hampton had hit a three ball. It's out of bounds to the Huskies. Want to remind you, Lauren Goodman will be chatting with the head coaches at the intermission, so keep that in mind. Double substitution for Grant. But Eddington will be at the foul line. She was up there a short time ago and clicked on one out of two. And shooting two, a pair. Two things are happening right now as we're shooting these free throws. Sheldon's kind of picked up the pace. They're kind of getting things flowing, listening to Coach Johnson. Um, so we're seeing a lot different results from them as you see Eddington knock down that free throw. And then Coach McCauley's trying to get her team to settle down and kind of get some control of the game. So two different kind of philosophies going on right now. Two out of two for Eddington and three out of four on the night. Sheldon trying to stabilize a little bit here in the closing minutes, chipping into a 16-point deficit. Now, Smith. Well, I got to point out the immediate change. Coach Johnson took the man-to-man -man off. And now she's in this 2-3 zone. A long miss from three ball range by Smith. All glass. Deep pass to the corner. Less than a minute remaining now. Open daylight shooting. Uh-uh. Short again. Olberg up the floor. Loses the rock. Richardson now with 38 seconds to go here in the half. 
22-13. A runner is missed in and out, but she draws a foul on the play. So Diamond Richardson back to the stripe. And fouls on Jordan Manuel, her second. And Richardson is 0 for 1 from up there tonight. Steadies up, deep knee bend, free throw, good. Long look and number two also good. 24 13, 25 seconds to go. Hufana with a runner is blocked. And a save try. Good effort by Eddington, but out of bounds to the Pacers. Here's Diamond Richardson walking dribble straight up the floor. On the point, now to Smith. A runner missed. Bobbled around, gathered. And the follow-up shot blocked from behind on the try by Kalia Brookins. Grant basketball, who wants to inbound? 3 seconds left. Let's see if the Pacers can get something up. Richardson short, no good. And there is a buzzer ending the first half with the Pacers in front, 24 to 13. And they have done a great job defensively. They've turned the ball over considerably, but their rebounding and their defensive tenacity and Diamond Richardson, the key reasons why they are on top here by 11. Well, Let's pick up Goody. She's down at floor level, and she's got Gina Johnson standing by. Coach, I'm going to try to get you back to your huddle quick. What adjustments do your team need to make coming out in the second half? Um, we have to be able to rebound the ball. Um, on the offensive end, we're not hitting our shots, but when we get back on defense, we're not, we're not able to adjust, and after they're getting first, second chance, they're out hustling us at the end of the day. What I know that's not the start you wanted, yeah. but what positive takeaways did you have from the first half, and what are you gonna get back to your team? Um, so I was hey, I, I was proud of them for able to adjust in the second quarter. Um, they got into the we went into the two three. Um, they're not giving up. So we almost got down. We were down by 16, down by 12 now. So I have improvement that we're getting better. So we started off slow. Now we're finally getting into the rhythm of the game. All right, coach. Good luck in the uh, second thank half. You. <laughs> back to you, Will. Okay, thank you very much, Lauren. Gina Johnson, if I know anything about her, she's going to have her team on a different level come second half action. Happy to have you with us on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week at the intermission. Grant on top, leading Sheldon by 11. We'll be right back. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him one fourth of one half while I was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, hmm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> 
Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter on a stick. stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking? Make them buckle up. He can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Second. Are you orange? Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. the intermission here at Grant High School this evening and in our opening telecast of the 2018-2019 basketball season we've got the girls up first on our schedule and we're at Grant High and the opposing Sheldon Huskies have journeyed here to Del Paso Heights to take on the Pacers and it's been Grant in control throughout the first half, leading from the outset. But Sheldon coming back to a noticeable degree. They're still down 11, but having heard Gina Johnson's confidence in her interview with you, Goody, um, I can imagine that the complexion of this game will take a turn in the third quarter. Coach is very passionate. She has a group ready. And as you saw at halftime, she's She's talking to her team, walking out on the court with them, so she's more than ready and confident what they're going to do in the second half. Well, the coach is always in control, or would like to think so, and we talked about these two coaches extensively earlier in the pregame. But we like to have comparisons to talk about, and our chief statistician and Graphics operator David Stewart has given us a scoring comparison by quarter. So it looks like, unlike this evening, the Huskies get off pretty well in the first quarter as opposed to what the Pacers do. Second quarter as well. And it looks like Grant has better production in the second half, but in three out of four quarters throughout the season thus far, Sheldon has had the edge. And that's because Sheldon has been able to dominate the teams that they've played thus far. So when you get out in those big leads, obviously you're going to have first three quarters very big. And as you see, a significant drop in that fourth quarter because Coach Johnson keeps it respectful and she knows that, hey, it's not a blowout type of situation. And she's usually scoring less in that fourth quarter because she's had significant leads in the first three. And they've played fewer games. They've only got five in the book so far. They dropped their opener, but they've run four straight wins, whereas Michelle McCauley's outfit at four and seven, a lot more action, and as a result, having had a better look at her younger players. Um, I think that's two different situations. I think Coach Johnson coming in in her third year, more strategic with the schedule, trying to make those games more impactful and meaningful. And then on the other hand, Coach McCauley getting an opportunity to get her kids to play more. They get more opportunities to play, more contacts. They're going to be better. When you get game experience, you have no choice but to improve. And so that's why you may see an influx of games on her end versus Coach Johnson. Okay, after having seen the first half of play, Grant got off to the, the nice lead early with the spark of Richardson's uh, 12 points in the first quarter. That's been neutralized, and we saw that the defense shifted toward her more and made things more difficult for her. If you are in the Grant locker room, what's your primary message, Goody? 
Um, I'm about to go talk to coaches right now, but I think the main thing is they need to be focused and hungry still. They're young, and so you want to keep their attention to detail on um, why you have them, keep them engaged. But other than that, keep them motivated. Motivation, always a key factor, a key element in terms of what a coach can bring out in their players. And when they're very, very young, as is the case with Grant High, it makes that challenge even more difficult. Just looking at the Grant roster, sophomore, junior, sophomore, junior, junior, sophomore, sophomore, freshman, freshman, sophomore, sophomore. So we're not talking about a world of experience for the majority of the ball players on the Pacer roster. But Michelle McCauley, always up for a challenge and had some very successful seasons at Foothill High before coming over this year. Well, it looks like Goody has caught up to Michelle McCauley. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to floor level and Lauren Goodman. Well, Coach, rolled out big in the first half, first quarter offense what was that like for your team or what was that message to your team the message is we just came off of a big loss we had a league game against McClatchy and boy they just hammered on us relentlessly for a league game it was just like a, an eye opener that we've got a lot of work to do we don't have trainers we don't have that off-season training so we're playing catch up and that's my message that hey we got to clean things up coach how do you keep this young team focused to finish you want them to focus and finish how do you keep that focus alive right now focus to finish we really concentrate on our grades first I want them concentrating in the classroom and then we can talk basketball I want to really minister to that student athlete and that's what how I focus we, we spend lunch together and we're together through the day and I'm checking on them while they're on campus awesome coach thank you back to you will thank you very much Lauren boy I sure like that ethic uh, academics first and as a result it builds continuity for the athletes when they when they do take the court. So we're just about ready for second half action as we'll open the third quarter with Grant sitting on an 11 point cushion, 24-13. They jumped out to a 10 point lead after one at 13-3. And Sheldon did show signs of getting it together here in the second part of the second quarter. So we'll see if that can carry over as we open third quarter action now. Set to inbound. Kyla Hampton shoves it in to Diamond Richardson. Shaky pass intercepted. Take it strong, a layup down. Great read right there. Steal, drive, and layup by Montana King. A bad shot and a miss. Here come the Huskies looking real aggressive right now. Take it strong, another layup, and a whistle and a foul. We're seeing the results of an immediate adjustment. You see King now into this new group or new starting lineup for the second half. And Coach is ready, made her adjustments. Let's see how this rolls out. 24-15, and at the stripe, Alexia Hufana averages eight points a game and shoots 60% from the stripe. In and out, no good on number one. Very proud of Hufana. She kind of started with Johnson as now she's a junior, so she's developed a lot, and that's a key contribution to her work ethic, but also Coach Johnson's commitment to getting her better. She misses a pair. Here's a save. It goes to Richardson. Always in attack mode. Smith shuffled him from here to there. No call. Dangerous pass and a whistle and a foul called on Alyssa Higgins trying to break up that very risky pass. And that's why Coach Johnson is living right now because if you call the travel, you avoid that foul, and now her player picks up the foul. Well, always animated. Gina Johnson, inspirational in her own right, certainly motivational. Richardson has not had the same rhythm she did in the first half, and Smith drives and called for the travel. Turnover Grant, and they had a slug of them in the second half. I should say 
in the first half. 11 of them. Deep range, gunning, another long miss. Put back, missed at point blank range, but Eddington hustles for the rebound. Hufana, another clanker. I wouldn't want to look at their shot chart. Richardson maneuvering into a crowd. Smith now, a long miss on the bank try. Offensive rebound, Richardson another shot. Lots of gunning, lots of misses. This is a game of confidence. The team that has the most confidence will be successful tonight. Down, a deep deuce, a two ball shot there, greased by Higgins. And the Huskies pull a little closer. Smith, Oberg, outside shot, drained down beautifully by Hampton. Her second three of the game, and it helps out a lot. Coach McCauley looking at her team, trying to get them all organized and settled down. It takes a key part of leadership to get your group settled in this gym. This is a loud, rowdy gym. You see Coach Johnson over there, very animated and passionate about her team. And so, you know, she was just fighting for the travel call on the last one, and then it's called on her. So, of course, she's going to give the referee an earful. Walking dribble, belt high, straight up the floor, Diamond Richardson. Happy birthday, Diamond. Sweet 16. Nice to have you with us tonight for the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Richardson, uh-uh, not there. Good position by Olberg, who rebounds and has it tapped away. And will stay with Grant. Big key for girls, basketball in high school, box out. Nobody's boxing out. So giving a lot of teams opportunities to get second chances like there. You see no box out. Again, another try. Still no box out. Um, coaches are probably going to stress that tomorrow. Feed low. Eddington scores on the feed from Hufana. Richardson again through traffic, takes a tumble, and it's a foul call. <laughs> now, big part, you see coming down, Ufana trying to push with the dump. Great find for editing down low. Well, Gina Johnson beside herself on that last call. Powell in the crowd gets drilled twice. Wow. Things are warming up as these players have turned up the heat. And now you'll see both coaches standing at attention right now, but a lot of antics coming from the visiting side. Uh, Mother-like daughter um, right now, Tandem going in as Grant gets the ball and bounce. Richardson again through traffic, again hits the deck, another foul. Wow, they are piling up. Four team fouls now in the opening three minutes against Sheldon. Part of that raucous crowd here at Pacer Gym. It's so, just something to expect every time you play. I don't care what the sport is, um, the Pacers come out and support their teams. Richardson a free throw. Here's another look at the foul. Bang, bang, bang. There it is right there. Right across the face. Durham. Easy call. Now, Will Richardson needs these buckets to get back in the offensive rhythm. She was kind of cold for that moment. No doubt, but she greases a pair up 10. Where are the Huskies going to get their offense? They have not had the outside shot all night. Eddington in a driving layup right through the defense. Great ball rotation for the Huskies. Great execution of offense. 29-21. Another miss by Richardson. Look at Powell hit the glass and stick it back in. Major difference. You've seen the Huskies kind of get a run in that second quarter. Powell was on the bench. Now she's back. Jump shot, air ball short. A near steal, but Powell comes up with the loose ball. 
Here's Richardson. Smith left wide open. A miss. Offside rebound, yanked, controlled by Dodd. Open J, uh-uh. All the Pacers under the bucket rebounding, surrounded. Here's the outlet, it goes to Smith, two and two. Not a good angle and a miss. Transition the other way, two and one, uh-uh. Powell back for another rebound. Couple of missed baskets going back and forth. I know somebody wants to get in control of this. Another miss by Richardson. Push it up the floor. Eddington ahead of the pack. Misses in close. Follow up. Missed at point blank range. Out of bounds to Grant. Nobody can buy a basket right now. We're kind of on a dry spell. Some subs and rotations coming in, but nobody can get a basket right now. I'm surprised there hasn't been a timeout call by one of these coaches. The frenetic pace has <laughs> worn out the crowd for sure, but no break. Inbound to Richardson. Pacers up 10 on the flip side of quarter number three. Three, 20 to go here in the third. And a timeout taken by Michelle McCauley and the Lady Pacers. It's a 30. We'll keep it here. And there's a good look at that Husky bench getting some congrats. All the hard work is evident, but they're still down 10, Goody. Husky's got a lot of support tonight. As you see Coach Johnson in the middle trying to give some inspiration and motivation to her teammates or her team right now. She's trying to keep them passionately involved. As you see right here, Eddington getting to the rim easy, easy money. And then coming back on the other end, you see the offensive rebound right there by Powell. And then she takes some contact to finish at the basket. She has played a whale of a game. And uh, a lot of times, excellent rebounding somehow goes, goes unnoticed. But not in this case. We have noticed Raven Powell cleaning up the glass. Richardson, deep J on the way, a long miss, but here's Powell with the rebound. Out to Richardson, she fires and misses. 0 for 2. Eddington boards it and sends it up the floor at the three minute mark. Take it all the way, a driving layup. Second time we've seen that. Out of King, Montana King, four points in the quarter. Now we see some extended defense by the Huskies. Now they want to keep it under control because they're in this zone right now to stop the Pacer drive. Down, Richardson. A timely bucket right there. She had seven threes last night to help support a 47 point outburst. Turnover, Sheldon. And you can tell that she's very confident on this coach. Coach McCauley, as we see right there, she's doing a wonderful job right now with the program. I cannot tell you, Will, when I've seen the girls' side, this much energy, this much passion, this much support. But Richardson is definitely leading the way with this. She's a pacer for life, as you can tell, and she's showing it tonight. Travel and a turnover. Powell a little anxious to get into the key. And that's been the biggest thorn in the side tonight for Grant. And they're pushing 15 turnovers right now. A bobble and a save. Out of bounds though, it's a turnover as Eddington must have had a foot on the line. And you can tell right now, Coach Johnson is right on that line with the refs. Um, every call, they're kind of looking over to her, uh, making sure they're satisfying her needs. But as she stands on that line, she's going to be pushing and watch, pay attention to how that impacts the game. Richardson deep on the perimeter. Kick out. Smith down. Three ball corner pocket. That was big. A jump shot at the other end, canned. 
Smith wants another one and it gets slapped out of there and rejected. And then she carelessly picks up a foul as she hacks Alyssa Higgins. And well, you see here Richardson getting the attack in the zone and then the drive kick is wide open because she's so deadly when she puts the ball on the floor. Minute and a half remaining third quarter. Grant by a dozen. Runner banks off long and Powell cleans up the glass. Richardson. There's something special in that kid, Will. Olberg lobs it out. Powell fires and misses. Nice rebound crash and that should be a foul against Eddington. And it is. Gina Johnson trying to get her team all on the same page. They're playing in spurts, but so far it has not been enough to take the lead. Baseline jumper is a foot long. Air ball, outlet up the floor. Who's got the cherry picker? Down, ahead of the pack. Easy money that time. And Dodd sticks it in. Well, well, this is a new challenge for the Pacers. Yes, they play teams and they're winning right now 4-1, but this is a different type of team. Competitive, well coached, and you're at the Pacers home. Up the floor, interception by Richardson. Quickly back at the other end, a runner is down. She can do it all, Will. Diamond Richardson back to a 12-point lead. Baseline drive left wide open, bank shot good and a foul. That was not good defense on the baseline there. Huskies fans full in at attention. Great support tonight from the Husky fans as well as the Pacer fans full in that effect. Um, but again, like I was saying, the, the Huskies are being tested. They're playing a physical team um, with a lot of passion. Richardson with 10 seconds left in the quarter. A 10 point pacer lead. She fires away. Back rim, no. And Dodd rebounds. Three seconds. Push it up the floor. Eddington down. They beat the buzzer, and that's a big bucket right there. After three, Grant still on top, but the Huskies coming on. We'll be right back. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. We have had three intensely played quarters here at Grant High School on tonight's Hometown Sports Game of the Week with Lauren Goodman, I'm Will James. Right now, as the teams take the floor to open the fourth quarter, Grant on top, 39-31, but the Huskies coming on strong now. Huskies have warmed up to the game. Coach Johnson, actually, obviously her halftime speech was impactful because they had a big third quarter. They did indeed, so here we go. They've got first possession, and Eddington travels for a turnover. And you can see the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Eddington very passionate about that travel, just like her coach. 
Smith, a pull-up jumper, falls short. Look at Powell clean the glass and draw a foul. Wow, Raven Powell. That was a snatch, Will. That was a snatch. She snatched that right out of the air. I do not have an official tally, but I would think that she's pushing up close to 15 rebounds. A clunker on number one. Substitution Sheldon. Eddington's going to sit down for a minute and catch her breath. Good on number two. 40 31. Grant. Outside gunning, still bad results from shooting from deep range for the Huskies. Another air ball. That one gunned by Higgins. Smith trying to shake loose and does. Gets inside and tough luck on the layup miss. One and done. We haven't heard much from Hufana here in the second half. That was an aggressive drive right there. How about that? I'm impressed. Mambuay. Uh-oh, a steal away from Richardson and a layup is down. How about that off the bench? Just using minor action tonight. I'll tell you, Alicia, yes, we are going to show 24. Mom boy, showing the heart, the passion, strong drive down the middle to get the teardrop floater. And then you see her pick pockets so she can get the and one and hypes her team up. Is something that Sheldon needed right now closest they've been in the game for a while. Well, you can see Gina Johnson and Mamba Way, who was their leading scorer a year ago, has been injured and used sparingly here in the first part of the season, but that is precisely the spark, as you see there in that huddle with the Huskies. Gina Johnson inserted her at the right time. Key and coaching moment and a key player moment. Be ready when your number is called. Continue to coach everybody, regardless of what has happened in the game. You never know the outcome. Crucial possession for the Pacers here. Having seen their lead dwindle down. Third time tonight on the deep three ball cashed in by Hampton. You see Hampton had a little flare on that one. Wrist. I did Dang see it. it. I did see it. Flare you very much. Durham, uh-uh. Got it back and poured it in. And Durham just needed to be patient today. She's gotten some good looks and opportunities, but she hasn't taken advantage of them. Way to down. Richardson is taking control on her end. Special kid Richardson, as you see her playing the top of the defense right there. Easy foul. Six minute mark. Fourth quarter, Powell is gonna come out of the ball game, partially for a rest and partially to protect her foul trouble. Running with four. Is that four? I think they're calling five right now. That's five, five. or foul. Oh, well, I better check my arithmetic. That is a major, major loss right there. Yeah, I think somebody else's foul was maybe dinked on her on that one. I have four for her as well. Um, wow, we in and out, tough luck. But prior, um, prior to this, Will, I seen um, Gina's statistician coming over to make sure that the fouls were accurate on number 15. So I'm, I'm maybe she picked up that fifth one just now. Hufana misses a pair. Near steal. Olberg pushing. Risky pass, ill-advised. Another Grant turnover. They did not do a good job of protecting the ball. And as a result, not a good job protecting their lead. 
timely of, uh, uh, possession right here. Whistle and a foul. Uh, Dwayne Walford. Non-shooting, baseline inbound. You gotta turn around and look, and he, she puts it back in. Durham's been a spark. Richardson a miss, no rebounders. Powell's on the bench. Push it strong, my boy, a miss. Kept alive and grabbed by Richardson. Whistle and a foul. And Mamba is in clear pain. She re-aggravated that ankle injury. Tough luck. Tough kid as well. She's trying to stick it out and trying not to have coach come out there so she doesn't have to get out of the game. But clearly trainer is there with her now. And we're going to have King come in. And King's been a spark here in the first third quarter minutes. But she's going to have to prove herself right now in these last five. Tough luck right there. Hate to see the injuries but she's a real competitor. So Richardson at the stripe for an opportunity for Grant to stretch a bit and cannot hit the front end. Durham, Ufana, down! And she draws a foul. And Lufana needed that one to go in the rim. She's going to have to come up big with her free throws. Not been her night from the free throw line, but she's going to have to start making them as a vet. The foul is on Mercy Medicine Crow. She'll come out of the ball game. Her fifth foul. So Hufana to the stripe, trying to clean up a three-point play. And does. Right on time. She needed that free throw. Maybe that N1 bucket got her going. But she's going to have to make her free throws now. I know she hasn't had the night that she's wanted from the free throw line. And you see Coach Johnson getting a timeout so she can get her troops riled up and ready to go for this four-minute stint. Yes, indeed. There's a look at that pacer huddle. This is a key timeout. We've still got nearly five minutes to play, but the momentum has shifted significantly and the Huskies hold the momentum. Right now is definitely in store for a lot of positivity. Got to motivate as a coach as well as put the X's and O's together. More positivity gets more from your kids. So right now both coaches spitting a lot of positivity in their players' ear to have confidence. A player with confidence is deadly. Well, we'll see who stays clutch. And as a result, maintains confidence. Here we go. Up the floor, Diamond Richardson. Hampton sends it back to her. In a crowd, got a whistle and a foul. Very special talent in Richardson. Very special. And she's dominated in every aspect she can right now. She's going to have to get her second win and lead these Pacers into a victory. They call the foul on Dodd. Deep knee band and a Richardson free throw. Badly needed point there. And she's up there for number two. No good on number two. They'll settle for 46-42. This is anybody's game. Hufana passes up to Jay and drives it. Misses a runner with an air ball. Hampton rebounds. Get it to Smith. And a whistle and a turnover. The ball was on the line. 
We've seen that quite a few times tonight. That's a, one of the not so good things about playing here in this small stadium. Um, kind of close and tight, and you get a few of those step on the lines. It is a smallish gym. Block clean. Olberg carries the rock for a turnover. So here come the Huskies down four at the 420 mark. Into the post, Durham pushes off and banks it home. Nice post play. Durham has woke up in his fourth quarter. Things are tightened up, about as tight as you can get. Richardson, short. Huskies all over it, and here's a tie up. Smith able to dive in there. And Grant fortunate to get the alternating possession. Coach Johnden, Johnson has the suspenders to the side right now. She's kind of getting loose, trying to get her team into a great defensive position so they can get a stop. Richardson in a crowd, shoves it out to Hampton. Now Smith, now Hampton. She's been tough from out there. Not this time. Rebound and a tie-up. Durham gets in there to tie up. Kalia Brookins, alternating possession, ball goes to Sheldon. Three and a half to go. Grant by two. Penetrate inside, Durham down. She's had a eight point fourth quarter. We are tied. Whistle and a foul. Correction. Simply a tap away, pacer ball, timeout Sheldon. And we'll see. It's a 30 second timeout. There you see an excited Sheldon bench as Gina Johnson has helped bring her team all the way back. And that's a true testament to how it's been the last three years she's been there. And some of these players, they understand. You see a lot of passion in those huddles because she's put in the work to get to this point. They're working on a 5-1 and one record that they're trying to get tonight. And she is passionate about keeping that streak going as well as taking her team to the next level. So you're going to see a lot of passion from her players as well as her. They have twice trailed by 16 points. But the second half has been a much different story. Grant has been unable to really find another significant scorer, although Hampton has chipped in with three threes. Here's Richardson now. A lot of pressure on her, just a sophomore. Pressure on her to score. And that's a miss on the runner, but they rebound again. Off the side of the backboard, ill-advised. Husky ball. And you see a lot of enthusiasm right now. As you see, all the fans came down from Elk Grove, ready to cheer and support these Huskies on. A tie game, 249. Let's see who stays calm and who gets rattled. A block against Grant. And they are, this will be bonus time, I believe. Yes, indeed, to the stripe. Elisa Higgins. She's 0 for 1 from up there. A miss on the front end. And Olberg got out hustled when she had the better angle. 
Well, that's what we're talking about, paying attention to detail and being ready. You got to be ready out there, knowing that Grant needed that possession. Baseline drive, whistle and a foul. And again, making her presence known, Montana King goes to the stripe after drawing the foul from Kalia Brookins. It's very interesting how it all plays together when players come together and you've been at a program, you start building as you see King knocking it down. King, the once great standout for the Luther Burbank tight. So great transfer right on time. One out of two and Durham misses the put back. Outlet broken up, it's a turnover. This is the first lead of the game for Sheldon and here's a runner that's down and a foul and again, Montana King. And all the Huskies in the building right now are going crazy as they come back and fight to be in this game. Montana King. Three point play, she comes up big. 50 to 46, suddenly Sheldon by four. Here's Richardson at the 205 mark, still lots of time. A drive, a whistle, and a foul. And now this is, a, this is the moment, test of time right now, Coach, or Will. You see Coach standing on the sideline right now, 100% confidence because I'm confident in Richardson with the ball. Every time she touches it, she makes something happen. So now it's a battle in will of Richardson and her talent and her ability to force this win and get in this win, or Sheldon's ability to stop her when it's needed. Misses on number one. We're at the two minute mark. Composure. One out of two, 50 to 47. Turnover, Sheldon. One of the few flaws in this entire quarter by the Huskies. Now key, key to the game right now was minimize the turnovers. Both teams have a stack load of turnovers in very crucial moments in the game. They need to take care of the ball. Minute left. Walking dribble straight up the floor. No urgency shown. Richardson misses on a three. Olberg rebounds it. Immediately surrounded, but Coach McCauley gets a timeout called in there at the 145 mark. And I'm loving both of these coaches are really coaching and managing the games really well. Coach McCauley, um, you see no worry, no stress. Best player kind of out there doing her thing, Richardson. But she's just letting them play. Um, both teams are working very well, and they're responding to their coaches. Um, we know you guys have talent, but you got to have somebody to lead you. And both coaches are managing this game pretty well tonight. Yes, they are. In the three ball department, it's one sided, but despite Grant's seven threes, they're down by three. Let's see if they try to get it all at once. Minute 45 to go, inbound to Richardson, back out to the perimeter. Hufana out there, tough on D. Gut check time for Hufana. Let her fly. Uh-uh, not this time on the miss by Hampton. Smith rebounds and gets it to Richardson. Sneak inside, the runner missed. And what's the call? Held ball tie-up, alternating possession to Sheldon. 125 to go. Mix up on the possession arrow. Eddington back into the ball game, replacing Dodd for Sheldon. Now this is crucial. Coach Johnson was kind of in a debate with putting Eddington in. She has four fouls. She's gonna have to play smart right now as she needs to end the game for her team. 
We haven't seen any extended pressure from Grant tonight until now, and we'll see how effective it is. 2-2-1, two, two, full. And this is a great time to put it on. Grant, um, Sheldon hasn't seen it, so they we don't know how they're going to respond, but Coach McCauley is making a good coaching call right now and kind of shaking it up. She needs to apply pressure and not allow them to walk the ball up the court. We've got a little bit of clarification here at the timetable, perhaps on the number of fouls, a scorebook being held by the Sheldon scorekeeper, and now the teams to the sidelines, but they're being waved back out onto the court by our umpire, David Clement. Don't know what the question was. I think but. it was on the foul, foul either number, foul count, or who was the foul counts on. I know the Sheldon um, score or statistician has been coming up constantly trying to make sure that everything is even and checked. Um, and there probably was some discrepancy right there. Mufana right through the press. Gets it to Montana King. Let's see how they play it with 1.15 to go. They're up three. Mufana. Eddington on the baseline drive, lays it home and draws a foul. And Eddington is the spark plug for these Huskies. Definitely emotional, volatile, and there's a good look at the junior forward who's, despite being hampered in foul trouble, has played a whale of a game tonight. Trying to complete a three-point play. Measures, fires, and in and out. Look at Durham. Whistle, possible lane violation. And that's a tough one for the Pacers, just focus, paying attention to details. That's something they didn't need, little minor mistake. Eddington again, and another whistle, and another lane violation. Oh well, a violation against Sheldon, so here we go, a minute to go, and a five-point cushion. Grant's gonna need to pick up the pace here, no time to relax. There's a reach-in foul on Eddington. Too much emotion, too much passion, and that's why Coach was worried about her going in, and now she picks up her fifth. She's out of the ball game. Disqualified at the 54-second mark and getting some consolation and perhaps a word of advice about being careful with four fouls. Smith, the free throw, good. She's been very quiet this evening after a 24-point burst last night in the win over Oakmont, but she hasn't had very many field goal attempts. Two out of two. So Smitty drops the pair, 52-49. Up the floor, Durham misses in close. And a tie up, possession arrow to Grant. And you Gina see Johnson, acrobatic along that Husky sideline in protest. And you see everybody kind of going up celebration and antics. Coach is more frustrated, not with the call, but her player. You cannot get frustrated off a miss and turn around and foul. That was a frustration foul, and now you see a frustration call from Coach. Coach might want to keep it under the realms right now. She has a lead, and an unwarranted technical right now would definitely swift things to the Pacers' side. Kalia Brookins hits a free throw. And you see the bench going crazy. That's coming in from somebody who had five fouls, probably not in the everyday rotation, but stepping up when they need it. Number two, all glass, a miss, got a whistle. Basketball awarded to Sheldon. Pacers within two, 45 seconds left. Here's their extended 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. Hufana, badgered by Smith. A near steal, here's Montana King traveling from here to there. And look at Coach McCauley 
crowd getting her team up, pumping them up, getting her team forward. And then you see Coach Johnson fired up, Bun coming out. She is ready to rumble. Hopefully her team will be able to respond right now. Well, I think, I think we're due for an overtime. Oberg down, a three ball from the corner. Up one, here's a runner, missed on the bank, and a tie up on the rebound. Possession arrow to Grant with 25 seconds to go. Be ready when you get an opportunity. Two big plays from not their normal players right there. That was a crucial three in the corner. Wide open, by the way. Undefended. Little bit of uncontrolled pandemonium here. And a timeout taken by Gina Johnson and the Huskies with 25 seconds left. This game is far from over. And now it's pure lack of communication on defense. Huskies, you got to know where everybody is on the floor. You cannot give up wide open shots. That was a big time three from not the big time player this time. That's a fact. Let's take another look. Teresa Olberg, number 11 for Grant. And now, Will, I'm going to tell you why this is wide open. McCauley has an offense that is giving her team an opportunity to drive and kick. Drive and kick. So as soon as they got an opportunity to stop the drive, boom, you kick it to the corner, and you see that wide open shot. Okay. Let's reset for you. 25 seconds to go. Grant has rallied living. from a five-point deficit. And you see right here, Sissy Coach trying to get Coach Johnson under control. She's worried about the possession aerial that wasn't set up. Grant has a little technical difficulty right now with their possession aerial. And Coach is livid about the last possession not going to her on the jump ball. She's got a point. Up the floor, Richardson barrels over a defender, Montana King, who was moving at the point of collision. So King picks up the foul. And Richardson at the stripe with 21 seconds and a chance for a wee bit more security. The one point lead is not safe. Not at all, not with 21 seconds left on the clock. She's got the first one. Fifty-four, fifty-two. Richardson, number two, dropped it. Fifty-five, fifty-two. Seventeen seconds. Extended pressure by the Pacers. Feed low. Layup missed. A foul from behind as Richardson got shoved out of the way. And here's a reach in by Durham as she knocks down Hampton. And Will, I don't know what's happened in the last quarter as it's gotten intense, but the gym is filled up with more people, more fans, of course, cheering towards the pace away. Now the crowd has come alive. A miss on number one. And a miss there, but Diamond Richardson tracks down the rebound. Four seconds left, feed low, got a whistle. Well, Richardson back to the stripe. Another superlative performance by the sophomore Gunner. And hits that free throw. She's had a field day at the foul line here in the fourth quarter. She's had two, four, six, eight, nine attempts in the fourth quarter alone. 
Number two, missed that one. 56-52, Ufana a miss at the buzzer, and this one is in the book. 56-52, Grant, after leading virtually the entire game, relinquishes the lead to a fired up Husky ball club, down by five, but the Pacers recover and pull out a home victory to end Sheldon's four game winning streak and put victories back to back for Michelle McCauley and the young and fired up Pacers. How about that? Big time support, great coaching on both sides, but Coach McCauley got her young team in the right positions at the right time. And as you see, everybody in Pacer Stadium is very excited and appreciative of this win and to get this W. That's right, our cameraman just got mauled by Pacer fans who would not allow Greg to come over. Uh, that's a bit out of control and I have to call attention to it. But stay with us because Goody will be interviewing our players of the game as she always does. Don't wander off, we will be back. Maria, that's how it's work. It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting easily viruses spread. So Miss Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. Your son wants to get a cat, really but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, <laughs> B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. <sighs> when it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. The verdict is in and the decision is final this evening in Del Paso Heights where tonight at Grant High School in Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, our basketball debut was a doozy as Grant High entertained the invading Sheldon Huskies and it turned out to be quite a ball game after a rather one-sided first half. A great start by the Pacers, a spirited comeback by the Huskies led by coach Gina Johnson. And then after falling behind by five, the Pacers rallied back to win it in the closing seconds by a final count of 56 to 52. Our players of the game, we had a number of standout performances, probably a handful for sure. And it was a treat watching them perform tonight, but a couple of them stood out beyond the rest in certain ways. 
That being said, our players of the game tonight for the visiting Sheldon Huskies, Alicia Eddington, the slim junior leaper, a real speed merchant, put everything out on the court tonight. A wonderful performance. We'll see lots more of her later. And for Grand High School, a dynamic sophomore scorer, Diamond Richardson filling it up again with 29 points. Our Lauren Goodman is standing by with our players of the game. Lauren? Well, Will, I'm here with two standouts tonight who did their thing on the court and held it down for their two schools. First, for the Huskies, you played big tonight, a lot of energy. How did that help your team out? Helped out a lot. Like I said, I couldn't do it without them, so yeah. You picked it up in the second half, came in and made some big buckets down in the fourth quarter. What was Coach Johnson talking to you about and keeping you focused in that fourth quarter? Just play hard, stay focused, and keep it together. Now your team is doing some amazing things this season, getting off to a good start. How do you guys want your season to go and what impact do you have in that? I want our season to go all the way. I'm talking championship. That's big. Now you guys have grown a lot, gotten a lot better since the, the three years that you've been there. How much do you guys want to take from this win and just build? We're going to take a lot and build off from it. Awesome. Thank you so much. You played amazing tonight. Thank you. Now for the Grant Pacers. I have Diamond Richardson balled out tonight, young sophomore. Now it's your birthday, I heard. How big is it to play on your birthday? It's really big. I didn't think we were going to win. Well, I did. I was just playing. But it felt great because we did it as a team. We didn't do it by ourselves. It wasn't just me. I had somebody to rely on. I had my whole team. They stuck through the whole way. Now you had a lot of leadership, tremendous, just high-fiving your teammates. How big is your leadership important role to this team? It's super important because they look up to me as a role model, and I feel like that I should always be their role model and always look out for them and always keep them in check, just like the coach. Now, before tonight, you had a 43-point night, big night. Was that on your mind coming in tonight to just score big or play big? Well, no. Like, I just come to play and find my teammates. If I can get the shot, I'll take the shot. And without my team, I couldn't do it by myself. Now, in that fourth quarter, you shot about nine or ten free throws, just get into the free throw line. What is your thought process, and what are you trying to do to create that contact and get to the free throw line? Crunch time. We got we to gotta want that win. We gotta now, I got to tell you, bro, Grant hasn't been in this place, energy, vibrant. Like, how much does that make you want to play better? And obviously, got a brother on the boys' yeah. side. How much more is this just a family atmosphere, and you guys are just getting better overall? Um... Well, I look up to my brother so much. I love him. Everything I do is for him, my family, my team. So I just come, I just come to ball. <laughs> you played great, Diamond, and happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, Coach, I'm here with the, the legend around here. Coach, you played, your team played a phenomenal game. You coached a phenomenal game. How was it in that last stretch, fourth quarter, kind of got intense? We're young, we're a very young team, and we're building. And each practice, we want to get better. Each game, we want to use it as a practice to get better. And I see the growth and development of the team. And I'm just so proud of this team. I'm proud of the hard work. Good things come into Grant High School, and good things definitely come out of Grant High School. Coach, how happy are you? How does it truly feel to be back at your alma mater and be at the head of the ship now? It's an, I actually feel honored. Um, I grew up here in Del Paso Heights. I attended Grand High School. To come back and teach where I was a student, it's just an awesome feeling and it's an awesome way to give back to the community, to be an example to the young ladies um, that's on the squad and on campus. Coach, now I gotta acknowledge you talked a lot about just grades, academic success, character. How much are you trying to change the image of the program and rebuild something to give these student athletes an opportunity to flourish? That's a, that's a good question. I feel like we're, we're planting seeds, and we're going to plant seeds, and we're going to take care of our seeds, and we're going to nurture our seeds, and we're going to support those seeds as they grow up. This team means everything to me, and I just want to make sure they're with the, in the right environment so that they will develop into these beautiful flowers. Coach, now I have to acknowledge and pay attention to the support Grant has and probably unmatched support in Sacramento. What does that truly mean to the girls program? Because you don't usually see a lot of support around girls, but to have the gym filled in here and to have them cheering and supporting your team, what does that truly mean?
truly mean to you in the community? It's just awesome. It's overwhelming actually to have the student body come out, to have the principal and the vice principals here to support us, and just to see them on campus and always encouraging the girls and just talking them up for them to do the right thing. And that's what we're trying to teach. Do the right thing and good things will come. Thank you so much, Coach. They're in good hands with you, and I know that they're going to have a lot of growing to do. Will, back to you. Well, thank you, Lauren. Certainly all the praise and the kudos extended to Coach McCauley. Very well deserved. Uh, this was a serious challenge to come over to Grant, uh, Grant High School and try to revive a program that at one point in time was at the top of the mountain but had been down low of late and without a 500 ball club uh, for more than six years. So for Lauren and her questions to Coach McCauley, a wonderful way to, to direct the complimentary remarks and, and the compliments to her. This was not a cakewalk coming in to take this job. Now for her young team, and we underscore young, they coasted early after getting the good lead and then showed character when they fell behind. They could have folded their tent, all these uh, freshmen and sophomores that were on the floor at the time, but they didn't. They battled through it. And also testimony to Gina Johnson and her ball club coming back from a 16-point deficit twice to tie the ball game and then go up by five. Tonight was a learning night for both teams, even in the victory or the loss. A lot of learning things that they need to do, a lot of maturing that happened tonight. So both teams put out the effort. Obviously, one team had to be victorious, but there was a lot of learning moments in tonight's game. Learning indeed. And certainly uh, Diamond Richardson on her birthday coming up big with the performance that got them over the top at the end. And... She had plenty of help, as she said in the post game while speaking with you. And let's not forget the excellent three ball gunning that they got from Hampton when they really needed those threes. So with the young squad, uh, lots of room to work north for Coach McCauley. You can tell that there's a lot of changing that's happening right now here in Pacer land. And it's a good positive change, especially to see on the girls' side. Well, this is just our opener, the basketball season's opener for the 18-19 season. We're thrilled that it was such a remarkably exciting ball game. Next week, we have more coming your way, as you might imagine. We'll be in Folsom for the annual Folsom Bulldog Classic Boys Tournament. And we'll toss a doubleheader at you on the 22nd. So. Be prepared for more of the same of what you saw tonight. Excellent basketball here on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. I'd like to extend major appreciation and gratitude to the Grant High School administration and particularly to head basketball, head varsity basketball coach Michelle McCauley for her cooperation and assistance with our broadcast arrangements. Special thanks there from the entire Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast crew. For Lauren Goodman and the entire crew, I'm Will James. We thank you for joining us tonight. And as always, look forward to the next occasion when we can get together. From Grant High and Del Paso Heights, so long, everyone. Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension 0. This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers. Fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a long sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, 
a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Home TV and of the Week, and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda.